passionate about like spreading love when you first started the job, but now it's like was you've been doing I, this for thousands of I, years. No, you know. I wasn't. I was a perfectly happy primordial being on my <laughs> own, just hanging out, and then fucking Venus comes and grabs me, and she's like, "Yo, we're going to be besties now." By the way, I'm not going to actually tell anyone you're a girl, so everyone just thinks I'm a guy. But like, oh, two thousand years That's... or whatever. Anyway. Hello and welcome to The Red Menace, we're a comedy news <laughs> podcast bringing you the latest and greatest stories from Australia, New Zealand, the world and other places sometimes when our country fails us miserably. We have a special <laughs> guest here today. I'd like to introduce, you've just heard Cupid on the, uh, on the line. Sup. How are you doing Cupid? Didn't sound too great. <sighs> just exhausting. But, uh, no, it's been a big week, it's been a big week. Valentine's Day obviously is my... Um, pretty, it's, it's a main day. I mean, the rest of the time, it doesn't really matter what I do, but, oh, people get pretty intense on Valentine's Day. And then there's, <laughs> I, I get really, um, it just gets very depressing when people just, you know, they still don't get that I'm a girl, which is fine. And, um, <laughs> they also don't get like the whole, the fact I'm not blind. Like I'm not like, can I, um, there's can a I lot of poetry. Something? Yes. That perhaps might be a little bit touchy for you right off the bat. Now, Thanks, a lot Alison. of Cupid, a lot of Cupid depictions are of a naked baby angel. It's a small, yeah. a small boy. A naked baby angel? Because no, no, okay. I'm not. I don't know why the Romans did that to me. I don't get it. I, I, I don't know why. I, I don't understand. I think it's because they were like threatened by Venus or something. They were like, okay. oh, we can't have like a woman who doesn't have a baby. So let's give her a baby to hang around with. I don't know. People are weird. <laughs> anyway. I, right. I, so you think it was the inherent misogyny of the Roman people that led to the depiction of you as a naked baby? Hey, dude, I'm just a god, all right? I don't make the rules. Okay, sure. I can, I can confirm that Cupid does actually look like an adult woman. She's just wearing, like, a T-shirt, but there's, like, holes cut in the back of it where the wings stick out. Um, oh, okay. That's good. It was good. actually really hard. She had to, like, pull them down to get through the door into my house. It was, like, mm, a whole, it was an a effort. whole thing. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, useful to have. Useful to have. It is helpful flying around. I mean, because once you get up high enough, right, you can pretty much just, like, divide mm. the world up into eights. So then... <laughs> I mean, when you do... No, but then when you do, like, the whole Valentine's thing, you know, you get the arrows going, it just means that instead of, you know, taking, you know, well, having to do the whole run-up for the entire week, you can just do it all in, like, ten minutes. Sure. It's pretty good. Okay, out of curiosity, does that mean that... So you're doing it from, like, such a great height. I imagine that would increase the chance of, like, arrows missing their targets and maybe hitting the wrong Dude, targets. God, eyesight. Okay, <laughs> so you, you, you never make mistakes and accidentally stick someone with Once again, I'm not really cool with this whole thing of people remembering my mistakes, okay? I mean, <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> Like, I just feel like it's unfair. I mean, like, right. Helen of Troy. I'm like, look, that was one stuff up. We didn't <laughs> need to keep going on about it and still sure. going on about it. And then there's that the whole Medea thing. Once again, not my fault. And then, like, you know, and I mean, if you're getting more to modern times, like Henry VIII, once again, not really my mm. fault. I gave him a perfectly good like relationship to start with it was fine and then he's like nah man i want to make my own church and steal all this money from the monasteries i'm just gonna fuck well, this bitch over and i'm like she was perfectly good i picked her out just for you like come on what? yeah look um there's, there's, been, there's been a few a few more stuff ups since that time he was very um, pretty there. Henry. can i can i turn oh. your attention to brangelina what went on there um, oh, that was a real Give us up. the inside scoop on Brangelina. Well, once again, obviously it was all for publicity. I didn't have anything to do with oh, that. Oh, that wasn't your hand. You weren't involved in that at all. No. Also, people, look, people, I mean, I especially failed. these days, now it's just a lot easier to just sort of inject people full of oxytocin, which is basically what I do. Okay. <laughs> <So>. um, <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay, uh, well, that's not, not Alison, ideal. How about a story, huh? <laughs> uh, well, this I is don't actually... know why this is, like, so hilarious to you two. I mean, I just feel like... I'm sorry, it's, it's just kind well, of outlandish I'm sorry. for us. I'm sorry, we should not be laughing. No, it's just a normal, everyday thing. This has been happening literally for millennia. I don't get... We shouldn't be laughing at your 
at your no, serious your, job. This is um, your work. I mean, this is, we, um, made the, we made the same mistake at Christmas time when we were laughing at Santa when he was talking about his mistreatment of workers, but um, really that's not a joke. We had a few of people from the Elves Union coming to us and saying that we shouldn't be laughing at their suffering, and, you know... I agree, I agree. So Yeah, we, we mm. apologise, like, sincerely yeah, for that. Yeah, we're that throwing that out there. <laughs> See, I don't get why he needs an army of elves. I can do my job on my own, but whatever. <laughs> it's because he's have... a, an old man and he's lazy. Is he yeah, old? He's decrepit. I mean, I mean, I looked at him across the table. He looked pretty dang old to me. Yeah, mm. there was... There was some wrinkles there. Too much time in the sun. I thought he had, like, a bit of immortality, didn't he? He's, like, got a demigod thing going on, right? But he did that thing where he was born and then he aged until he got to, like, 95 and then just stayed there for, like, a thousand years. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, like, why would you want to be eternally 95 years old? Mm. If I become a vampire, like, I'd like to become a vampire soon, so I'm, like, still got some semblance of not being decrepit and uh, don't so, don't be 17 and do the whole let's go to high school 100 times yeah, don't do that exactly yeah so anyway this is an article that i was going to share last week but uh-huh. it, it, it turns out to probably be more appropriate for this week um and so this is one from the independent another classic publication from the uk <laughs> high quality high quality journalism <laughs> As always. Um, And this is by Greg Evans. And the headline goes, Vegan bride sparks criticism after uninviting her family from wedding because they eat meat. So this is a lovely way to start it off with a lovely uh, story of love here. It's a power move, certainly. It sure is a power move. People are weird. (laughs) Uh, Are you vegan, Cupid? Am I vegan? Uh, For a while... And then I stopped. I mean, it's like everyone. Look, once you live for, you know, a, you know, a thousand or so sure. years, you tend to try everything out for a while. Yeah. You've lived through most of the fad diets. You've done yeah. keto. You've done, you know, exactly. the paleo exactly. diet. You've done vegan. Well, I did the paleo diet, like, in the paleo time. So I didn't oh, really sure. feel the need. <laughs> of course. You were, like, the original <laughs> founder of the paleo diet. Well, no. I mean, I am just a primordial <laughs> being. I'm not, sure. like, God, right. God. <laughs> Pete Evans got his idea from Cupid. You oh heard it here God. first. Um, um, so it says a vegan bride has attracted criticism online after she stopped her own family from attending her wedding because they did not subscribe to the same lifestyle. The unnamed bride posted her story on a Facebook page called Vegan Revolution, where she confirmed that her family had been uninvited as she and her husband didn't want to host murderers. Okay. Uh, That's, um, here's. I feel like that kind of cuts off the vast, vast, vast majority of people that are currently alive. <laughs> yeah. Like 95% Look. of them, which that just sounds like a hard way to go through. It just your sounds days, like maybe. a not great way to live. Hey, like just cutting off everyone from your life. I don't know. I feel like this is one of those things where once again, humanity tends to just like to make excuses for other reasons. I think maybe she probably just has a falling out with her actual family. That tends to be what happens. Like I get blamed a lot and like, there's that whole, you know, I'm going to run away with this person who I'm in love with. No, it's not because they love the person so much. I mean, I know I'm good, but I'm not (laughs) that good. And like, (laughs) so I'm just kind of like, it's usually because they just want to get away from... So it's like, you don't actually love the person. You just really don't like your mum. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. (laughs) (laughs) The story gets deeper, though, because it goes on and it's saying, like, in the Facebook page, a lot of the vegans were not supportive of her decision to uninvite her entire family from her wedding. Can't imagine Um, why. But... Anyway, the, the, one of the bridesmaids then popped into the comments of the original post to make the situation even more confusing by claiming that she and the family supported the bride's veganism and that the family weren't even invited in the first place. Okay. Were they like eloping? <laughs> um, eloping to I like guess a... so. Once again, cash grab, probably cash grab. It's probably like, I just don't want to pay for that much, you know, food, that many guests. <laughs> I mean, I, look, I've seen a lot of weddings in my time, um, and that tends to be the issue. Like, I'm sorry, I meant to be, like, romantic, but no. No, fuck it. <laughs> no. But no, it's your job. It's not... I think a lot of people get this idea that it's just who you are. But it, it, for you, it's kind of a job, the love thing. Definitely a job. Definitely yeah, a job. It's what you... So when, it's what... 
when people get excited about like they're seeing someone or they're like feeling very romantic do you just look at that and you're like do you go like oh or do you get like a sense of professional pride like yeah i did it uh look obviously not every time um it's usually usually look the you know obviously the ones that you know go on my like wall the you know the photographs of the best couples i've you oh, know you put keep, together you they're usually the ones on your wall. like well the best Wh- ones which couples but yeah which like, couples so the best one give us a Oh, uh, like the ones who've like, look, that's the problem. You're not going to know any of them. They like died together, you know, sure, so it's sure. just like old people. It'll it's not like, that exciting. Like Romeo and like, Juliet would not have them on the wall. Well, they were very dysfunctional and they uh, Well, exactly. Like it's just like, well, exactly. Which is, but I'm trying to sort of give an example of like, they get a lot of publicity. Whereas, you know, and like, obviously, were they as real you people say, not a great in... relationship. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, because I was operating under the assumption that Romeo and Juliet were fictional characters, but, yeah, that's really insightful. Thanks for letting me know. Have you ever heard about the, like, multiverse theory? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yeah, sure. Too long the day for this, Cupid. (laughs) I'm just saying that, you know, every possibility you've imagined is possible and and has happened. It's like a really edgy autobiography by Shakespeare where he changes the (laughs) ending, so... In real life, he's Romeo, and he takes the, like, fake poison, and then Juliet takes the poison, and then in Romeo and Juliet, Juliet's like, Romeo then goes, oh, now I must take the real poison. But Shakespeare changed that last little detail. In Shakespeare's real life, Juliet took the real poison, and he was like, ah, fuck me. All right, I'm going to go get, like, a falafel (laughs) or something. (laughs) Yeah, he was like, why did she take the real poison? And then just left. Yeah, he was just like, well, all right, this has been a weird week, but I better get more plays like, to well, write. I guess um, I wasn't. Once again, I, I have seen that thought. version. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there any more to this story? There's not really much more to the story. I just thought it was a fun concept of this woman. Uh, because it's the independent. It doesn't go into much detail. The entire story is basically just uh, a lot of low-quality Facebook screenshots that have a lot of grainy images. They can't even get, oh, like, a yeah. nice, high-quality screenshot from Facebook. It looks like... You know when someone has taken a screenshot from Tumblr and uploaded it on Twitter, and then someone's taken a screenshot from Twitter and then uploaded that on Facebook, and it's just getting increasingly lower quality? That's exactly what these screenshots look like, and so I cannot be bothered looking at it and reading into it. That's very reasonable, I think. <laughs> the, wor- the words, <laughs> okay. it looks like I can't see. It looks like I'm going blind when I'm looking at these screenshots. So if you have another story, that, which means I don't have to read these screenshots, then I I'd do. love that. I have a few different things. So I have, firstly, I want to give you my favorite headline that I found this week, which is Richard Gear becomes father again at 69, just because I think that's inherently oh, funny. Oh, that's a good, uh, a good year. Exactly. So that's the ideal year to become a parent, I think. Once again, <laughs> who came up with that? <laughs> <laughs> you could really like patent a lot of shit you well could yeah go definitely. through a large amount of the internet and be like royalty fees royalty fees royalty well, the fees problem yeah, was when they like Copy put all that everyone. stuff together i was asleep and uh, oh. it was too much of an effort after that i'm sorry <laughs> yeah. um what i want to read is so there's a twitter account called relationships.txt which okay. um has Photo uh, yeah, screenshots from the r slash relationships subreddit. I didn't want to go onto there myself, so hopefully relationships.txt has like collated well, that's some of these beauties. Because it, yeah, look, it's better um, than um, venturing into that yourself. So I'm just gonna run you through a couple of like people's really interesting relationship questions that they had for the internet. So, okay. Um, this is posted by Forsaken Towel. Um, That's a good username. Yep. So this is a post has been 86% upvoted. I'll cut okay. right to the chase. Since the beginning of our relationship, my boyfriend has been the worst at time management. Since our first date, which was at the beach, I let him know I'd be arriving a little earlier, around 11-ish, to scope out the area and explore a bit. We agreed on noonish, noonish and he arrived at 3. For almost oh, the... that's quite late. It's significantly late. For almost the two years we've been together, he's always been like this. He's not just a little late to things, he's regularly two to three hours late. Even when I'm with him, he moves so slowly, gets distracted so easily, (laughs) and has no sense of urgency. Sounds like Venus. (laughs) Is her boyfriend a sloth? 
Yeah, is her boyfriend, is Venus a literal sloth? Well, yeah. I mean, she likes sleeping a lot. Like, she, she, yeah, I mean, she's pretty... Look, okay, I mean, there's a reason why I'm doing all the actual love stuff sure. and she's not here right now. <laughs> like, you know, she's she's asleep right now and I am basically being her PR person, which is ridiculous. Look, once again, I'm not hugely cool with this job. Um, but anyway, look... Uh, What's your relationship to Venus? Like, what... Is it a professional relationship? I or suppose we're like... Blood sisters. Okay. You know, she like forced me into one of those blood pacts, and of course, in ancient oh, yeah. Greek times, Relatable. it actually oh, means something. Classic blood bonds never work out the way you want them to. Oh, tell me about it. <laughs> um, he also smokes weed, which I normally wouldn't be bothered by, except for the fact that it, may- it takes him hours to do, even when he promises it'll be really quick. Plus, he seems <laughs> to need to smoke before literally everything, before a well, meal. I, I feel we found the answer for his lack of time management and his slow movements here (laughs) before a meal before we go out anywhere before we go on a walk before bed etc it's gotten to the point where i've stopped trying to do things with him i don't ask him to go on trips or go on dates or do any activity together because i know i'll be waiting for hours essentially our relationship is just me hanging out at his place while he smokes i think this person's Uh, not actually dating them i think they're just they're like weed friend yeah look i I mean, look, there's been a lot of relationships I've been responsible for, so I'm not actually going to be able to remember, like, the one guy who was a pothead with the one (laughs) girl who was, like, obsessed with hanging out with him despite the fact that he obviously had no interest. Um, So, look, there's been a few like that. And once again, not really my fault. Like, so I what advice do... would you give to this couple? What What's your, like, expert advice on this situation? My expert advice? Well, my expert yeah. advice is, like, listen to your heart, because I'm the person who's in charge... <laughs> That's the worst advice I've ever heard. No, 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 no. I'm the person who's in charge of that realm, and okay, if they sure. actually did, then they would probably notice that, oh, actually, probably not the best idea right now, should go off with someone else, if they bother to actually listen to it. But you know how there's that thing where people sort of make a decision and then they've, like, committed to that decision and they don't want to renege on the decision because sure, they made got, the decision in the first place. they've got their heart set on it, if you, it's like if you will. It's like sunk costs, right? That's what this relationship <laughs> is. It's like sunk costs. And so, that happens a lot. At, Once again, not my fault. At that point, they're too financially fault. invested. <laughs> well, exactly. So obviously emotionally invested, which is a currency sure. in itself, as I would know. Okay. Um, can can I, I buy breakfast sandwiches with... Car- uh, with Emotion currency. Emotions, yeah. Obviously. Fair uh, it, it, in which place do they accept that as a currency? Oh, you just have to, once again, just like a bit of love drug, boom. Because oh, so, you know, so you're saying seduce someone out of a sandwich? <laughs> seduce someone into making me a sandwich. Look, I, I'm i not the type of person who's going to do that all the time, <laughs> but I certainly <laughs> make sure that I get the staff discount like everywhere I go. Like, sometimes you need to get shit done. Like yeah, sometimes yeah. Well. absolutely. I've only got it's not like I get yet. paid for this job. That's fair. You don't get paid. It's free no. labour. Well, Jeez. I am a god. Like, who'd pay you, you know? Exactly. Do you, I mean, are you allowed to unionise in the Dodge like Union? Who, who, pays, who pays the Prime Minister? Who pays the President? Exactly. Crazy yeah, stuff like the that. the people. Yeah. Mm. So really, we should do, be paying um, you, shouldn't we? Can you Well, unionize? you kind of do, in just the, like, hilarious... Anecdotes. Yeah. I just watch <laughs> it all, and I'm like, <laughs> you idiots. <laughs> can I um, <laughs> give you another one of these fun sure. little... Sure. ...tidbits? So this one is by... Um, Mangogur. Um, this one's only had 60% outvoted. Well, that's not great. I'm a recent college graduate, and I've been seeing this guy who I went to school with for the last couple months. I'm 21, female, and he's 22, male. Everything has been fine. No noticeable red flags, no pressure. We really like each other. I stay at his house often due to some tension with roommates in my apartment. This week I stayed over and he was showing me where to get some clothes to wear because I stayed longer than anticipated and was wearing some of his clothes while we were chilling at the house. And I tried to open one of the drawers and it was locked. I asked him about it and he said not to worry about it. I inquired (laughs) further. (laughs) It's like immediately the one way to make someone worry about it. What's in this drawer? Don't worry about that. 
I inquired further and he said it had nothing to do with me and that he, if he tells me what's in the drawer, our relationship will change forever. Um. Uh, classic blue beard. So it's going to be like a dismembered body. <laughs> oh, God. Fitting inside just, just like, like a, a drawer in a cupboard. That's well, a very you, if dismembered. You, if you didn't yeah. want to be suspicious, Ted Bundy's would popular you not for just a reason say, right now. Would you not just, just say like, oh, that's just some like precious heirlooms that I don't want to lose. What could possibly be in there that he's like this? He obviously thinks this it should be change so horrified our relationship by it. That right. I already like, explained. Undone. I've seen this before. Okay, can I just pit hypothetical? I want to know like what an example of an acceptable one would be because I can imagine someone being like, "That's where I keep my Dungeons and Dragons stuff." I didn't want well, to admit to you that I played. That's Dungeons where he and Dragons. keeps his um. What's that? <sighs> Big Bang Theory themed pajamas, like the big zinger pajamas that he likes to wear all the time when she's not around or in that drawer. Like it doesn't have to be a body; it could just be something deeply, deeply shameful. <laughs> like a Big Bang Theory box set and Big Bang Theory pajamas. Cupid is looking at me with this expression of like disgust right now because I don't <laughs> think it's a body in the drawer. Well, I'm just saying I've presided over, you know, the Viking era and, you know, if someone doesn't want you to see something that badly, it's usually it's probably something probably a body. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, maybe she's into the bodies though. Well, once again, you have to try that out with the person ahead of time. I mean, oh. <laughs> you have to like get one of the dismembered hands out of the drawer first and just introduce it over the dinner table and no, if, yeah, if it there goes, was... see how it goes down. Because there was that guy in um, England. Once again, actually, good job on my part. I mean, they were horrible people and they were serial killers, but good job on my part. And it was just that thing of, like, I think they, um, yeah, he, like, took her out to um, kidnap someone together just to check how she'd well, react. Oh, and, yeah, uh, just like as a she reacted favourably, yeah. And oh, uh, then they yeah. killed a whole bunch of people together. And well. then... Although then it got all very weird because then I think they both got arrested and then he was like, I'm eternally in love with you because he was. And she was meant to be like, I'm eternally in love with you. Once again, not my fault. She was like, I'm going to save my own skin. And then he got really (laughs) depressed about that and suicidal. Once again, not my fault. And she's still in prison and he's dead and a lot of other people were dead. But (laughs) once again, (laughs) not my fault. (laughs) A lot of people are dead and it's not Cupid's fault. That's the takeaway from this. If I were to start dating someone, I think that might be the worst possible. As a someone with anxiety, <laughs> like the idea of I have a secret that I won't tell you and it's really bad, but please don't worry about it. Like you may as well that's just me, say that's to me. That's going to be all she thinks about now is what's in that drawer. Oh, that's yeah. Fred the one West thing and that's Rosemary West. Mind. They're the ones I'm thinking of. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. I just thought if if any listeners you know wanted to check it out. Want to. Re- Look up romantic serial killers. Yeah, look, I'm just saying I don't discriminate. <laughs> There's probably far too much, far too many hits on the internet for romantic serial killers for anyone with good taste to click through. Yeah, God, that's depressing. Um, <sighs> Happy not... Valentine's Day, guys. <laughs> um, I'm going to find one more of these and then how about we move on to a regular story. All right. Um, so this is one that I take great joy in. So this is, okay. the, the, this, is po- this is posted by someone whose username is Big Dick Energy um, with two Y's oh, at the end. No. So that's okay, well, because Big Dick Energy with one I was definitely one Y was definitely mm. taken. So no, 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 no. It's all been taken. All of this stuff just turns up in graffiti in various places around the world. <laughs> no one is original. Sure. <laughs> um, this one only has thirty three percent upvoted. So oh, well, that's just, not uh, good. Take that from that what you will. Um, the he- title is Worried That My 24 Female Girlfriend May Be Cheating On Me, 34 Male. I've been seeing this girl for about six months now. It started off pretty casual, but now I feel like I'm beginning to have feelings for her. Even though the start of our relationship was casual, I made it clear that I didn't want her to flirt or see anyone else. And oh, I don't I- like this guy. And that I would consider it cheating. She agreed. I have no reason to suspect her. He misspelled suspect. Oh, her of cheating <laughs> up until the last week when she was abroad for work. I suspect that she had an affair with her male co-worker, 20s, because his name pops up on her phone more frequently now. 
A few days ago, we were hanging out out at my house, and the phone buzzed on the table. I think I saw his name. She suddenly reached over to grab it, which made me suspicious. On Saturday, my wife, 24, 25 female, threw a Chinese New New Year's party and invited my girlfriend. Said Uh, co-worker was also present. uh, I'm I'm sorry? (laughs) He's He's got his own wife, and he's, like, angry at this girlfriend for cheating on him. So the the rest of it is him just, like, accusing this woman of cheating on him. And then the comments are like, wait, what the fuck? You have a wife and a girlfriend? <laughs> he then says, it's complicated. But yes, don't think too much about that part. Right. <laughs> I mean, once again, I, I don't really have the oh, thing where dear. it has to only be two people. So no, that's, of course that's not. That's possible. I could have done that. I don't know. I can't remember. But you'd, I feel you'd like if there was you an are... arrangement at least. Yeah. There is it. If um... you are in a relationship with two people and one of those two people is seeing two people also, I, I don't think you have much room to be criticizing them. Can I just read through this comment chain? So Absolutely. Um, just call me sensei says, definitely sounds like a you problem. Big Dick Energy <laughs> says, in what way? Just Call Me Sensei says, meaning no one is going to feel sorry for you here. Roman Samurai says, I think if his wife is okay with his relationship and the girl had and even invited her to the party, it's not our business or problem. He's asking for advice in the relationship between him and his girlfriend, not the him and his wife. Focus. And then Big Dick Energy responds, oh, actually, wifey doesn't know, but that's okay. Oh, no! This person, like, gave him an out. This have- person defended him and gave him a way to get out of this... Having mistresses in a marriage isn't exactly new or a bad thing. Oh, uh, I think I know what's happened here. So, oh, normally, dear. okay. I mean, people, once again, social pressure is not actually my domain in any way whatsoever. So, I just think what's happened is that obviously these two have gotten married. They don't particularly want to get married or anything. Well, they don't particularly feel the need to get married, but social pressure forces them into it. And then there are sort of these extra people who come in once again because they're <laughs> bored or whatever. Sure, sure. Like, once again, not actually my problem. Um, I just feel like this is. Is just your just general people just making things way too complicated um, for themselves. Once again, yeah, well, listen to enough. your heart, guys. Listen to your heart. I think it's not this guy's heart that he's been listening to. That's I think point. it's a, another organ of another his body. Another piece of his body. Can I give his final sign-off post, which is uh, just really okay, fun? Okay, I'd love to hear that. Um, thanks. It's not for everyone, and I get it. Wish I didn't mention I had a wife in the post. Ugh, lol. But yeah, if wifey <laughs> leaves, then I'm fucked, because she'll take the kids, and hey, that's something to worry about another There's day. There's kids as well? Mm. So this oh, is, uh, this no. This dude's a real cat. Once again, I don't discriminate. <sighs> so, maybe. I don't know who this person is. Have you gotten an address there um, or something? Do, so do you think that maybe there's like a, someone out there who's like meant to be with Mr. Big Dick Energy... Yeah, probably. <laughs> so <I'll> <laughs> of course. Well, I mean, the girlfriend, you, if she's story? a... Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a story I actually found this morning, which I was really I was really into this one. Um, this is a, a... I'm into this in some ways and kind of also against it in some ways. This is a social experiment that one guy has decided to do for some reason. Um, and this is from the Washington Post, esteemed, actually esteemed news outlet which has done a not so esteemed story anyway I'm so, excited. so this is from the washington post morning mix uh by antonio nori farzan and it says he pretended a date stood him up at outback steakhouse on valentine's day strangers picked up his tab <laughs> okay um <sighs> this is an interesting scam to pull <laughs> This oh, is a very way, interesting yeah. scam to pull. And See, it actually, this is what um, you were saying before about emotion buying you things, Alison. Emotion does buy is. you things. Those people feel well, sympathy. Uh, yeah. They're buying him things. I personally go for the seduction technique. <laughs> but once again, I don't judge. Well, anyway, and here's the thing, right? When I first read the headline, I assumed it was just some, some con artist doing this for a con. But no, this guy's doing it as a social experiment. He's not just conning. <laughs> By the way, you can do you can do a lot of shit and describe and it as a social, a social experiment. experiment. Like I my feel favorite... like in 
in five years, there's going to be a Vice article that's going to be like, I hit someone with my car as a social experiment, and you'll <laughs> never believe what happened. Absolutely. It'll be like a YouTube social experiment gone wrong, because the person died. But they learned so much from this. And but, now they're donating all the proceeds from this video to victims of car crash. Once again, happened before. <laughs> <laughs> so this is... um. Yeah, so this story, it says, A thought popped into Stephen Bonds' head midway through Valentine's Day. If I went to to Outback Steakhouse by myself tonight and I asked for a table for two, then got progressively sadder as the night went on alone, do you think they'd give me my steak for free? The 27-year-old who works in technology sales and lives in Washington asked his hundreds of Twitter followers. His sister egged him on, telling him that she would pay for his meal on Thursday if the restaurant didn't. Three hours later, Bonza was waiting by the host stand at the Outback Steakhouse in Arlington, dressed in a fresh blazer and button-down shirt, and carrying a poorly wrapped present. I'm figured that if I'm <laughs> getting a, a free detail. steak either way, he told Washington Post later that night, it would be fiscally irresponsible not to do it. True. Yeah. The, I mean, the, yeah... For him, it's fiscally irresponsible. <laughs> but, like, you could use that logic of it's fiscally irresponsible to pay for anything because you yeah. could steal it. It's fiscally I irresponsible mean, for me not to rob a bank because... I'm not, like, I could have a lot of money if I robbed a bank. God. Okay. <laughs> uh, basically, what happens in this story is this guy... As he said he would, he goes to the restaurant, he shows up, and then he pretends to be having a phone call with his date, like be leaving her voicemail message and she's not replying and he orders her favourite drink for her while they're waiting for their food and he waits in the restaurant for like two hours until like the kitchen's about to close and obviously everyone at this time is kind of like throwing concerned looks his way and you know feeling quite worried for him what you're saying um, though is that he's got two hours worth of looking depressed to get through before yeah, he gets his stake. Exactly. That's so there is actually an energy investment. involved. Mm. Yeah. There's a lot of investment there. It's a lot of time. I want to break <laughs> down the logistics of this. I want to sure. think about like because you want to maximize your sympathy potential. Yeah, if you're exactly. Doing this. Now, so, can I just throw in there that puppy. in that time he ate two loaves of bread, like two of the three <laughs> loaves of bread. So. <laughs> That's, um, because they bring, like, free loaves of bread to your table while you're waiting. So he's also eaten a lot of bread at this point. That's, was he, like, at an olive garden? This is, like, a miserable description. (laughs) It's, like, it's Outback Steakhouse. I don't think it's much better than Olive Garden. I feel like that must be a genuinely, like, unpleasant experience, though, to sit (laughs) alone at a restaurant just eating Eating bread for two hours. That doesn't sound fun Eating free bread. No. (laughs) Like, I get the appeal of the free bread, and you'd be like, yeah, it's a fun grift. But at the same time, it's like, you sat alone at a restaurant while other people had fun around you and ate nothing but bread for two hours. Yeah, and it's not like exactly. you can just bring out your laptop and do some work. You have to actually look mm. depressed. So, yeah. You've got to commit to yeah, the bit. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he was using Twitter a lot to, like, live stream this whole thing on Twitter. Uh, but I guess he was pretending he was texting his date. Do you think that you'd be better off saying, like, it was a first date or that, like, it was your, like, one year anniversary or something and the person had ghosted you? In this case, he did pretend it was a first date because he said that um, the character for his fake girlfriend that he created, Catherine, she's a consultant at Deloitte and she lives in Arlington and that's why they chose this spot in Outback Steakhouse. And he says, we met at the grocery store. We both went for the same bag of shredded cheese. (laughs) She seems so excited for our Valentine's Day date. (laughs) What a bad meet now. This is like, this is what I want my life to be. I want a love of cheese. Yeah. (laughs) He wants to meet some ladies in the cheese aisle. You know how some, like, everyone's got their own, like, deal breakers. Like, Mm -hmm. people will be like, I will only... If you don't like prawns, can't do it. Do you think this guy's like, if you're not, like, crazy for shredded cheese, I don't want yeah. anything to fucking do If you're you. not crazy for pre-bagged shredded cheese, then we can't be an He's, item. He... You know how most people will, like, go to the cinema and bring, like, a packet of chips that they've bought in Coles or something? This dude's gonna go see fucking Avengers Infinity War eating shredded cheese out of the bag, <laughs> sitting up the bag, <laughs> as everyone looks at him, just, like, Oh, horrified. my God. <laughs> Oh, dear. Uh, so th- this grift worked, by the way, because one of the random couples at the restaurant paid for his meal out of sympathy for him. 
And um, then it kind of comes like, to the... Okay. It, at a certain... At a certain point... Yes. Earlier than two hours, you leave. Um, okay, let me be frank. At a certain point of, say, I think half an hour is the upper limit, you leave. Yeah, Because the person's sure. not coming. And at that point, not only are you, like, wasting a table, but you're also making everyone around you feel profoundly uncomfortable. Like, these people paid for this man because they didn't want to have to deal with <laughs> That's it anymore. Because it was too sad. They were like, oh, let's, mm. let's get him out. It's... But then it's funny because um, it actually goes later to say that, well, he felt bad that someone paid for his meal for him, so he made a donation to a random charity. Not actually to the people who paid for his meal and now probably reading this, like, what the fuck, man? Um <laughs> But I love that involuntary He's not going to be the charity. only one in Washington doing something like that on Valentine's Day. Americans are so overdramatic. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, you're, you're correct, because it's saying... I'm trying to find where it says this in the story, so I need to... Uh, okay. Oh, my God. Professional. I can't... Sorry, I'm so. trying to find where it says this in the story. I'm trying to find the exact quote. We'll cut I edited out a lot of Alison's typing noises and clicking noises. <laughs> um, and I've also gotten pretty lazy about editing out the clicking noises and I kind of just leave them in these days. Better we're taking. Um, okay, so it says some criticised him for wasting the waiter's time, arguing that he should have tipped more than $20 on one of the busiest nights of the year. Blah, blah, blah. It says back when he was in college, Bonza once found himself on the other end of the equation. While waiting tables at a Chili's one night, he witnessed a man being stood up by his date and felt so bad he ended up comping the man's dinner. Having been that server, I tell that story a lot, he said, adding that his outback waiter now has this story in his arsenal. So I... this guy, you know, he's, he's gifted this man a story. So clearly he hasn't done anything wrong. Okay, so it's like pay it forward. When, yeah, when you said sure. that he had been on the other end of the situation, I thought you meant that he had ghosted someone on Valentine's yeah, Day and I was when about I, ready to go in on this motherfucker. When I first read that, like that wording implied that he mm. had ghosted someone. Can I, I was uh, like, yeah. Uh, can I give you a story from cosmopolitan.co.uk? Oh, you absolutely can. 11 foolproof ways to actually get a date on Tinder. Okay, I'm I'm excited. Be female. If you're wondering, this is uh, this is targeted at women, I believe. It's um, not okay. that hard. If you're yes, wondering, yes. if you're wondering, these are some bore bore claims coming from Cupid here. If you're wondering why a Bradley Cooper lookalike hasn't appeared out of the depths of your iPhone and swiped right on your selfie, Tinder's vice president of branding and communications, Rosette Pambakian, might have the answer. Is it because you're wearing grey in your profile picture? Is your no. bio too long? Have you connected oh. to your Instagram? Here's her advice on how to actually Sorry, bag so a date on do Tinder. People, do people actually choose their dates based on whether or not they're wearing grey in a photo? Is that is that how things work? I'm not going to no. lie, Alison. I've swiped less, left or right on people based on less consequential things than that. <laughs> okay. So, like... That's probably not unreasonable. I mean, I get having a long bio because that's just a lot of energy to read that. See, I like that. You don't have to read it. You can still swipe left or right. It's not really that much of an issue. I mean, I like a long bio because it proves to me that the person is a real intellectual and they can write more than like a sentence at a time. Oh, I thought it just really showed they were very, very desperate. But okay. Now, I mean, it can be two things. My my you problem go. is, right, if if it's got a long bio, maybe it's just a lot of information and they're kind of hoping that people don't read the whole thing. But, it, like, the last line is, full disclosure, I am a serial killer. And that's, like, you know, you don't read that because you get sick of the bio first so then you swipe the way to make them acceptable to you. And then um, you've just hooked up with the serial killer. That would be a fun social experiment, huh? <laughs> full um, disclosure, I am a serial killer. Can once we, because again, you don't it's happened lie. before. Can we get... Do you think... Okay, I'm now curious whether you would do better as a male or female serial killer on Tinder. Like, if you, um, like if we get a picture of, like, an objectively really attractive person... Ted Bundy. Go on. <laughs> he's not that good looking, though. Like, he's no, all right. he's but all, people he's, are still weird. That's what I'm thinking. So if we get, like, some Zac Efron-looking Efron. motherfucker... Just straight up Zac Efron, right. yeah. 
Well, like someone who looks like him, but not like they know it's not Zac Efron, but they're yeah, as handsome as Zac Efron. But it could be Zac Efron. Efron. And then in his profile picture, he said, "Like by the way, I do kill women." Like, does <laughs> is he still going to get dates out of that? Yeah, I mean, fuck me, that's miserable. Probably because at, you know, at some point, you're like, well, at least he's honest. At least he's not a liar. <laughs> <That's true>. <laughs> <laughs> Because you know every guy that you go out with that doesn't tell you he's a serial killer definitely does murder people in his spare time. Yeah, like you exactly. Can't... Right. Men are trash and they all kill They're people. They're all serial killers, <laughs> essentially. So you've got to, like, you know, you've got to think, well, you know, someone's open about it. <laughs> um, number one. It's opening, very grim. Opening lines should feel natural. There is no magic opening line that works best, but the most successful way for a Tinder match to get my attention is by pointing out something in my profile that sparked their interest, whether it's my job, where I went to school, or my adorable dog, Bayou. What's interesting you would not ab- put where you went to school on Tinder. <laughs> you Tinder. Do you think that they mean the university or like, I went to elementary at Springdale? Oh, I guess Americans. this is an American thing, no, so they probably mean UK? college. Um, it's oh, who- UK. Um, it's whoever the vice president of branding and communications at Tinder is. And I feel like they're a global uh, corporation. American. Yeah. I feel like they're probably American. Also, this implies that this person is like getting high on their own supply using. Yeah. App, is it, is it ethical which, to be using Tinder to find dates when you're the vice president of. At best. Does that, <laughs> can they like force people to swipe? <laughs> yeah. That... They, they hack the app so that everyone swipes right on all the people that they like swipe on them. You come up on Rosette and you swipe left and Tinder's like, oh, whoops, you missed out on that one. You want to have another try? And it just keeps yeah. notifying it you keeps, about every single time you try It keeps popping up it. until you swipe the right way. <laughs> um, so she, her advice about bios is don't skip the bio. Never skip the bio section. It's your opportunity to tell your matches more about yourself, your hobbies, your interests, what we're looking for. We surveyed some female <sighs> Tinder users who date men recently and discovered that they are 98% less likely to right, swipe right on someone if they don't have anything in their bio. But don't go overboard. We have a 500 character limit for a reason. No one wants to read a novel <laughs> when swiping on profiles. I find emojis are excellent. Picture tells a thousand words. Done. Sure. What would the best emoji be? Like Flags. Flags? Yeah. Just, like, nationalism? <laughs> You're really into, like, nationalism? A lot of flags. Just all the different flags. So it's, like, oh, flag okay. pentagon. <laughs> Every flag emoji there is. So there's a 500 character limit. How many emojis can we fit into that bad boy? Uh, is there 500 emojis? 500 there emojis, Probably. yeah. You I, could say a lot in that. What I would do is I would do the unicorn emoji 500 times. Well, that's a good bio. What does that mean to say no, to people? This is a fun, That's the question. This is a fun I mean, I just experiment. know I'm from a classical Greek background, so to me, I'm just like, so you're a virgin. <laughs> I mean, some people are. The current bachelor is a virgin, and they will not shut up about it. So that's got to be oh, a thing for no. some people. Um, True. Number three, it's actually worth connecting your Instagram. The photos we take tell a totally unique story about us, and it's the way people communicate today. Instagram is a great way to learn more about someone, and it's a great conversation starter. Oh, dear. I feel like you could skip cut out the middleman here and just, like, hit on people on Instagram instead of doing it via Tinder. This seems like they're (laughs) introducing themselves into something that doesn't need to exist. Actually, speaking of Instagram, like, and this kind of whole, like, weird Instagram thing, this is, like, slightly off topic. One of my friends posted a picture of her socks on Instagram the other day. And she got this message from a, a sock company asking if she'd like to be sponsored by their sock company. <laughs> and um, she went onto their Instagram account. And for an, for an Instagram account that's advertising socks, there were a lot of boob photos. Yeah. Um... And I, it's quite a skill to be able to get a sock and a boob in the same photo. That really... I'm trying to imagine how you do that. Because as far as I can see, there's three <laughs> options. Flexibility. Sure. That's number one, is very flexible people, which like... Look, if you can do that, show that shit off. Yeah, The other sure. one is you're just holding the socks up in front of your boobs. <laughs> three, it actually, was probably no. more likely the first one. Actually, wait, there's four. Um, three is that a you've necklace got of socks. Necklace of socks, or four, you're using <laughs> socks as nipple pasties. So, like, there's a lot of good options here. Mm, yeah, well, 
I miss using the word good. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite as fun <laughs> as the nipple pasty sock one. That would have been more. That would have been more entertaining than uh, what it actually was. Tragic. You just have a was... low cut sh- shirt like made of socks. <laughs> that would be very fashionable. I'll never get tired of like the weird people or the brands that comment on even on like our podcast feed. Like we posted in that episode where we made lots of jokes about people eating cake made of glass. Um, oh there was yes, I remember a, this. A cake company posted on the, the episode being like, "Love your content, great work." And I was like, "Do you know what the fuck we're talking about, you guys? <laughs> Saying your product kills people." <laughs> exactly. But it's really funny because there's so many of the automated accounts. I remember there was one of my first Instagram posts was a photo of my food as per, you know, that's very on brand of my Instagram. Mm. And I, I joked on the Instagram and I put like hashtag fitness routine because I wrote like, you know, my Sunday fitness regime or something and then hashtag fitness, hashtag swole, hashtag everything like that. And then this random comment from like some bodybuilding like group was like wow we love your fitness routine follow our account for more fitness routines like that kind of shit and i'm like it, it's so obvious they haven't even remotely looked at what i've posted i'm gonna start hashtagging everything i post with like, oh, my swallow. favorite was i did put up as cupid i have an instagram i did put up a um photo of um some trains like as in the transport mm. kind of trains and i got a lot of people liking it who were um into gym sessions <laughs> because i hashtagged train oh my god Hashtag train. <laughs> i complain about the trains on twitter a fair amount and i've been sent several different people asking me to participate in surveys about disgruntled sydney train users being um, like Please. i've got a lot of disgruntled sydney train accounts follow me now yeah, it's like same. my main demographic of followers okay so number four sunday evenings are your best swiping time we found most of our users are active on Sunday evenings, but I personally just make it work for me and use it whenever I get some downtime at the office or with friends. Well, she sure. immediately discounts her own advice. Yeah, she immediately like, well, you know, it, but like that's for other people who aren't the CEO and can't like rig the who app aren't to the work CEO the who spends all their spare time using the app. Right? <laughs> it's wild to me. What? Yeah. This person, like, they've got Tinder on the brain and it's not healthy. Like, what? I just... I don't... I don't... Most... Look, I'm going to just put it this out there. They're most Tinder users. They're not actually using it in a serious way. Most of the time, they're just judging people with their friends. So, it worries me that there is so many individuals out there who spend that much time. It's a considerable amount of time. Mm. Don't be too hasty giving out your number. I've heard of couples who fell in love at first swipe with the first person they matched with on Tinder and exchanged numbers right away. But I think it's worth chatting within the app until you're sure you're interested in meeting them. That seems like fairly <laughs> obvious, like not getting murdered advice to me. Yeah, mm. it, it, it does. It does. Make sure there's a talking point in your pictures. Be like, dr- for example, a, a, a dead human body. Yes, like that's a, a dead human t- corpse. <laughs> that's a good talking If in one of the pictures you're holding up a severed head, then that's going to be a really good conversation They're going to be like, oh, it's been why, done. Are you holding a, <laughs> why are you holding a severed head in that picture? Well, you know how like there's that cliche of like men on Tinder will often, especially from, say, country areas, they'll be holding up, like, here's the fish I just caught. Here's mm. the, oh, yeah. <laughs> the deer Classic. I just shot. It's like, here's the human I just beheaded. Like, I don't see how that's different at all. <laughs> Well, that's a good point. Um, don't let smart talk, no, small talk, put you off. Sorry, I misread that, and that was about oh. to be the most wild shit ever. I do, do you know what I hate, though? If they seem I hate too when, like, smart, don't date them. It's not worth it. <laughs> well, you don't want them running away when you're trying to, you know, oh my God. serial kill, I suppose. <laughs> but you know, like, the whole... The whole... <laughs> Very, very 
bad content to be laughing at. I feel like we've really stuck a tone for this episode. It's much worse than our usual tone. Normally we just talk about butts and avoid dark, serious topics. But today we're going all in on the murder aspect of it. That's because I'm a primordial being and I've seen a lot of murder. Life is just yeah, meaningless sure to you, you have. at this point. Pretty much. This is, this is the mood that Valentine's Day clearly puts into our... Um, this is... Maybe the worst advice I've heard in my entire life. If things are drying up, it's always worth sending a funny gif or making the most of message liking, no. which I love. It's No, it's not. <laughs> there was this guy who was talking to me for ages on Facebook who, like, you know, I met him at some convention and he just started talking to me all the time. And he'd always try and start a conversation just like, hi. And so then I would respond, Hi. And yeah, then he'll say, correct. how are you? And I will say, okay, you. <laughs> and he will say, good. And then he will start sending me a lot of weird gifts and a lot of hugs and boop snows. And yeah, it's like, it's not a conversation. That's like a targeted, it's like <laughs> just sitting next to someone and nudging them slightly, yeah. like every 30 seconds is what's happening. <laughs> To be exactly. fair, I've had very long Tinder conversations with people just comprising of all the dodgy Harry Potter gifs. Gifs? GIFs. That's very on brand for you, though. Yeah. Not <laughs> as Cupid. <laughs> <laughs> Cupid is low-key, a big Harry Potter fan. Um, I'm going to skip number eight because it's um, literally just advertising for Tinder. They say super likes actually increase your chance of them. Fuck off, Tinder. No one cares. So you should um, pay for our upgrades. Yeah. Um, nine, avoid neutral colors in your photos. So they want you to make some, like, fucking Van Gogh, super garish, bright Well, colorful. my Tinder picture is me wearing Van Gogh sweater. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> so I, I do, I, as I say, I do it right. I am Cupid. I know mm. how these the things Van work. The Van Gogh sweater you yep. would wear to university if you were a human mortal? Yeah, that one. Okay. <laughs> if, you, if, if, like, you know, in, a, in a, another universe where you were a human mortal who attended the same university course as us. Yeah, exactly. In that universe. Yeah. In, that, in that multiverse um, theory. Since mm. I read this one, I've had to really reconsider my Tinder profile because you've both seen my wardrobe and it's... It is con- very bland. It's very consistently <laughs> grey and blue. They're really the two main colours. Um, I'm a sure. pale person with red hair, so it kind of works with that. Um, but I'm, I think it's maybe why I haven't found love, is I need to buy more colourful mm-hmm. clothes. You should uh, get green. Green. I'll yeah. look like a Christmas tree. It'll exactly. be great. <laughs> um, more pictures equals more matches. Fact. Having more profile photos Fact. and making good use. Fact. Statistics. Tinder statistics. Well, that's <laughs> not true. They say more <laughs> pictures. They don't actually mean more pictures. They just mean pictures where you can actually see the person's face properly and the oh, person's body point. properly. So if you just have two pictures with your actual face and your actual body, that's enough. I've been... Okay, Tinder that I recently... So I became single like six-ish months ago and I was joined Tinder and I had not been on it for several years before that. And How long has Tinder been out? Like three, four years, oh. I feel like. Um, and everything melds together when you're thousands of years old. You realize sure, how sure. like out of the loop with current fashions and trends you are when you do that. You're just like, <laughs> my immediate takeaway was like, wow, okay, thongs are really big these days, huh? I uh, was not aware of that, but um, all right, I guess I need to work on my fashion sense now. To um, to clarify for um hmm. our non-Australian. Listeners. No, 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 Alison. Bi-thongs, I mean the ones that are not the listeners. Yeah, I mean the underwear. Like, the standard okay, Tinder profile sure. photo now is just like a butt. So it's not really a human selection screen as it is like a butt selection screen. Okay, which, well. I don't know. I feel like I, I need more in a person than just a butt. Yeah, well. I, true. <laughs> I mean, I don't, use, I don't use Tinder. I don't use Tinder. But, like, you know the whole thing where people have different. 
they have pictures of themselves with their friends. And it's the same thing on Facebook. When someone adds you and you don't really know who the person is and you like look through their, all their old profile pictures are combinations of like the same group of people and you have to go through the process of elimination to find out which person is in every single one of those photos so you can work out who this person is. Okay, but Alison, imagine it's a very if annoying for all experience. of their photos, it was just six different photos of a butt. And then the group photos, it was just six <laughs> different butts all lined up. And you were like, which like, butt is it? Which like, butt matches That's with what this the person. dating game is these days. I can't deal with Jeez. it. Jeez. It's a, it's a sad state of affairs. What, what do you have to say for yourself, Cupid? Well, usually symmetry is the best thing to go for if you don't have, you know, faces. <laughs> So, to judge the best part for the most symmetrical ones is what you're getting at here. Does that mean... In my professional opinion. There's people who are like... I mean, some people who are a bit quirky, they're like, I like a nice lopsided butt. I like one side to just be like a little bit heavier than the other. Are That's we... fine Or one them. side is like I... convex and the other one's like concave. <laughs> It's like a drill-shaped person, or like a... Like, <laughs> it catches the wind, and it whistles when the wind blows on them. <laughs> it, like, goes inwards, so then when you're, like, laying on the sofa, you can put some, like, cheesels or something there for, like, oh a snack trick. Like a little... <laughs> a little bowl. But, okay, that'd be on the butt, so the person would have to be lying face down for you to use their butt bowl. <laughs> Once again, on this too, is all so not, like, eating. Oh my god! You know that one? I believe has 100% happened. That, that someone... absolutely has happened and somewhere it's happened, in like, the world. Like a lot of times in history, is someone sitting face down? On the couch I have eating no doubt that butt. someone has done that. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Do we, <laughs> do we want to wrap up? Sounds um, good. We've been talking for a fair while now. Can I put in a disclaimer? Maybe. I just sure. want to make people aware that yes, I am. I do know that the Greek version I'm Eros, and in the Roman version I'm Cupid. But as we all know, they're basically the same thing. So I've just been sure. talking about myself as Eros Cupid throughout this episode because I don't okay. like those comments where they're like, "Oh, you said you were Greek. Well, I was originally Greek. Anyway, it's fine. I just want to. But you're that, a god. It shouldn't that... matter what your nationality is because you're, just you're a basically. Of the world. Uh, I just find stupid comments annoying. You're a citizen of the right. world. You travel a lot. So You're not really do you, tied when down you, to now, your own nationality. Hmm. When you read ignorant comments about yourself on the internet, are you tempted to reply? Because I know you're probably not supposed to. <sighs> once again, on the internet, no. However, I mean, once again, back in the day when it was graffiti, I'd be pretty tempted sure. to just carve into that stone. But... Um, <laughs> You know, I mean, that only happened a few times and I realised it was a few times. Have you effort. ever have you ever carved a piece of the male anatomy in the stone walls of, you know, Rome? Um, why just the male anatomy? Well, yeah, Alice, the female anatomy. I just, dicks are just technically what people like to draw on walls, like uh, in general. I've, I've done all. All parts. You've done all? Okay, well, that's good. That's inclusive. <laughs> Um, it's the type of person I am. No discrimination. Cupid, do you have anything to, uh, <laughs> anything you want to plug before we wrap up to our many, many listeners? Yeah. Anything I want to plug? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, like, for this example, your... if you were in another universe where you were not Cupid and you were a human mortal. Uh, so not yeah. really. All right, fair <laughs> enough. That's fair right. Santa, Santa forgot his, what his own Twitter handle was. So like, Oh, what is my Twitter? Wait, I know what my Twitter is. Hold on. We have the most useless friends, Alison. None of them know their shit. We sure do. I know my Twitter handle off by I know, because you live Allison, on there. Yeah, it's just my, it's just my name. Alison M underscore H. That's A-L-L-I-S-O-N M underscore H. You can find me on Twitter. Mine's just at Chris Bolson. Got it first. Not a lot of people named Chris Bolson. Mine's at Well, e... see, now here's the thing. Whoa, whoa, Alison, stop. This is my moment. Mine is at E. Okay. Harrison, H-A-R-R-I-S-O-N underscore D. Nice. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Um, so thank you, everybody, for listening. Follow us on Instagram or Twitter at, at Red Menace Cast. Um, we've had a nice popularity boost relatively speaking recently which is very exciting yeah um please tell your friends to listen to it so we can continue that trend because now i'm addicted um (laughs) 
<laughs> You're addicted to the sensation of likes and downloads. So I've got a final headline from the Sydney Morning Herald. This one was written by oh. Christian Nicolucci because I want to shame this man for what he's done. Um, for what he's introduced to this world. This story is about a, um, a football player who was accused of being in a, um, let's say, an explicit uh, video, and he wanted to prove that mm-hmm. it was not him. So, the headline okay, is... Okay, sure. Tat's not me. Napper bears all before dog's official to clear his name. There's a lot of... Um... <laughs> It's a lot of headlines. A lot of words there. I do actually know this story. The- <laughs> um, but, yeah, that is a great head. Who wrote that headline? Um, that was Mr. Christian Nicolucci. Beautiful man. <laughs> Although, chances are he didn't write the headline. It was probably the sub-editor somewhere. So, well, his name's Congratulations to, it, to his so... sub-editor. <laughs> his name's on the piece. Yeah, you've got to own what your name's attached to. Thank you very much. As I found out last week. (laughs) (laughs) But didn't he come out with, like, first that that guy did say, like, they are my videos? What, now he's saying they're not his anymore? Oh, I haven't read the article. Oh, no, 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 this is a whole thing. It's like that came out and, um, and they were videos that were apparently filmed years ago and they've only just surfaced on the internet. And at the time he wasn't with the Bulldogs, he was with a different... Um, club, which meant that this time, if he gets penalised, it won't be fair because it was, wasn't with the club where he did the act anyway in the first place. And I can't remember the rest of it, but if you want a background, well, well there you go. We've, we've all made some mistakes in our lives. Uh, good, sure. <laughs> good luck and good night, folks. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>